Good afternoon. How's everyone doing? Good, right? Yes? Middle of the afternoon? So again, since we don't have coffee and chocolate, it's my job to keep you awake, right? So for the next hour, we're going to dive into the world of design thinking. That's an area that I teach at in Boise State in the College of Business. I mostly teach now in the MBA, but I've taken design thinking now down to undergrad, where again, our students are learning design thinking. Today, it's going to be fast and furious. It's going to be some lecture, but it's going to be mostly about you and your workbook and filling in uh, a problem, an unmet need, or a frustration that you're working on at your business or, again, something in your life such as traveling or something like that. So with that, let's get started. So again, this uh, session is on how to make your organization more innovative using design thinking. Christy Suchu, Boise State University, College of Business. So, what is the traditional approach to, call, to problem solving? Well, it's where products and customers are assumed to be known, features are already established. Uh, emphasis is on planning and operations, benchmarking against your competition, and incremental adjustments to your products or services. But there's a difference. What is the difference between businesses and design thinking. Businesses use rationality, objectivity, while design thinking use, uses subjective experiences, socially constructed ideas. Businesses are aimed at getting a better solution, a best solution, while design thinking is iterating for a best solution, a better solution. Businesses are about planning, and design thinking is about doing. Businesses, logic, numbers, models, our research is about past data, while design thinking is about emotional insights and using prototypes. Businesses, solutions with control, stability, discomfort with uncertainty. While in design thinking, our solutions are novel. We dislike a quick solution, and we embrace ambiguity. Businesses, abstract to particular. Design thinking, a movement between abstract and particular. So what is design thinking? It's a problem-solving approach. It's a problem-solving approach and process for wicked, multifaceted problems. It's not about our rational decision-making model or, again, problems that are more simple, where you have the problem, the criteria, a couple of different possibilities, you pick the best one, then you do feedback and control system. Design thinking is about wicked, multifaceted problems. Okay. So what are the characteristics of design thinking? We're human-centered. We're about observation. We're about interviewing. Empathy, always for the end user. Not you, but the end user, your customer. We're about experimentation, active learning, feedback, and prototyping. And all of these phases are iterative and may move back and forth as needed. What are the phases? We have six phases that we work through. So there is a process. It's not like it's just we go out and create something. We do have phases. We start with a problem finding. Then we go to observation. We do visualization, sense making. We do ideating, brainstorming, prototyping and testing. And finally, we put it in an actual business model that you can take to your boss or to the bank or to someone who's interested in your new product or uh, service. Let's go through each one. Step one, problem finding. If it's not, if you don't find an unmet need, a frustration, or a pain point, most likely your customer isn't going to change or they, they have no need to change. So we look for an unmet need, a frustration, or a pain point. Set two, observation. Yogi Berra said, you can observe a lot by watching. Observation leads to empathy. We document quotes. We look at our end users' desires, and we imagine the needs of those users. Have you ever watched an elderly person try to open a jar of pickles? Is it easy or hard for them? Have you ever observed children playing in a playground? Which place they go first and which one they move to the next uh, playground or play equipment? Observation. The next one, visualization and sense making. It's like a house plan. You need to know where you're going. So again, we do graphs, we do flow charts, we do physical models, and again, we do journey maps. Journey maps are a day in the life or the week in the life 
of your end user. Why do we do that? Because we want to see those gaps, those insights, and frustrations they might have as they go through whatever problem we are trying to help solve for them. Step four, again, is ideation. Finding the best answer is not the first answer, okay? We will do a how might we, which you're going to be doing very soon in your workbook. So again, we want to ideate and continue to look for the best answers. Fifth one, okay? Prototyping and testing. We want to fail early and we want to fail often. Why? Because again, why do you want to create something and six months or a year down the line you find out it doesn't work, your customer doesn't want it, and you spend all this money? That's the old way of doing things. Design thinking, fast, furious prototypes. We make them with clay, we make them out of cardboard, and then we test them and see what the customer likes or can do, and then we again continue to prototype. And lastly, we put it into a business model. How many times has someone told you about an idea? How does it work? How are you going to implement it? What are the channels? What are the metrics? They aren't there. So we always put it in a business model. And what does that incorporate? What's the problem you're trying to solve? Second, what's the target segment? Whom are you trying to solve that for? If there isn't someone who wants this problem solved, then maybe you're making a better mousetrap for someone who doesn't want it. Value proposition for the customer. What value does it hold? Solutions. What have you created? Competitive advantage. Why is it better than what's already out there? Channels. How are you going to get the product to them? What are the barriers? What are the constraints? Key metrics and uh, activities. How are you going to implement it? And lastly, cost structure and revenue. How are you going to make money? And again, we put it in a business plan, and it's all explained in a PowerPoint within I ask within 10 minutes to the person who is trying to solve the problem, okay? So, but there's a problem. Raise your hand. How many of you know of someone who doesn't like change? Okay? Well, you're not alone. Uh, universally, 70% of organizational change efforts fail. Why? Trepidation, feeling of failure, Change is difficult for us. Next one, aversion to disturbing cultural norms. We're great. Why are we changing? Things are going good. But again, we're always looking one, three, five years down the line. Where are you going to be? The next one, employee antagonism. Give me a reason, okay? And the last one, weak communication. I don't do any design thinking co consultation or um, uh, work with someone unless I get the complete, um, what is the word, uh, complete go from the CEO and the CFO and top management. Why? Because when your employees are asking you, why are we doing this, I need to have your support. And you're going to tell them why and why and, wh and how we're going to do it and the change. Next one. So what did we do? At Boise State, we studied 50 successful companies and found four themes that had similarities with design thinking to create a more human-centered, innovative culture. Co-creation was one of them, observation and visualization, prototyping and testing, and education. Co-creation, the first one. Needs to have interactions with users and stakeholders. Let me give you an example. Any of you here of Lego? Yes, Mindstorm? Sure, you play with them, they're great, okay? But they needed to create a new gaming experience. So they had to change from a culture of internal research and development where they held intellectual property very close and copyrights toward what we call open innovation. So what did they do? They co-created with techno-competent hackers, developers, and designers. They let the outside in so you could create things like this. How many of you have seen the pianos and the other things done with Legos? It's amazing what they do. Next one, insurance. How many of you like insurance? Raise your hand. We ought to be, right? Insurance. They call you and you're going, oh, right. So Mass Mutual decided we're going to use design thinking principles. They co-created 
interactive financial models targeted at young adults and made it fun. They co-created budgeting and financial tools for different inputs and outcomes. They co-created user-friendly online offices and had library content. And the last one, they use a variety of curriculums so you could invest your 401 different ways and see what might be an outcome. And then one of the other things they found, you wanted to buy wine, good valued wine. So there's a place where you can buy wine. Now it's your turn. Get your workbooks, please. Uh, they're back to back. What I need you to do now is you are going to be involved. This is what they told me. They wanted you to be hands-on. They wanted you to actually come out with an outcome. So, if you would, on the back page, let me just show it right here. This back page, okay? You're going to get out your pencils or pen. What I would like you to do is, with design thinking, it is not about what you think, okay? It's about your customer, your end user. Who is your user? What do they need in order to? And then the fourth column, who are your co-creators? We're not going to fill in the last one until the end of this session. But again, if you look at what um, Legos did, who is your user? Tech savvy users. What do they do? They needed to create a whole new market position in order to compete in new video gaming experience. And who are the co-creators? Hackers and developers. So you will just fill this in, and it's broad. But it's narrow, broad. If I said, create something new in the house that's white, that's too broad. If I say, create something white in the kitchen, now you can do it. Okay. So think of a problem in your business with your end user, what problems are they having, if you can think of that, and write this in and fill it in. And then I think, Stephen, you're going to help them out a bit too with what you have in your company in a minute. We have five minutes. Stephen, you're going to set the timer? Or? seeing them in person. Um, we coordinated um, with the actual the physicians. Um, so they told us a lot about what their patients typically look like, what their needs are, and um, we worked with uh, Texas uh, Tech University. So that was another co-creator. Uh, they had an application that they were able to use and leverage um, to pull the diagnostics from you know, any Bluetooth device and any one of our iPad or smartphone. So we worked with them to create um, a single device, a kit, basically, that had you know, Bluetooth connectivity, that had wireless connectivity, Wi-Fi connectivity, made it really easy on the users uh, to um, have all their diagnostics easily just checked 
uh, sent to the university to be reviewed and studied, and then that information would go eventually to the doctors that were able to make use out of it. So um, in the end, bringing in like Texas, Texas University, um, bringing in the doctors, understanding what the patient's needs were, you know, gave us a more open mindset to develop a solution that was pretty simple and useful. Um, you know, COVID is a pretty unique challenge, and there was you know a need for um, you know a lot of open-minded thinking. Good. So again, and when I do my consulting, we do this with three three different needs so that there might be three different teams or we prioritize which need is the highest and then we move from there. But we always start with this worksheet to see what are the unmet needs and who we can co-create with. Now we're going to move on. Okay? Observation and visualization. It's about empathy for the end user. It's about gaining insights. Let's talk about some more companies. Heard of FedEx? They use design thinking. Okay? They did 180 interviews with customers, agents, and couriers. What did they do next? They watched presentations from their employees and about videotaping how deliveries were made. They went into neighborhoods and actually observed when they dropped things at the door, how they got things out of the trucks, how fast, what were some of the concerns and problems. And they did personality tests. And what I always do in my groups is all of my uh, whoever I'm working with, we do personality tests, whether you hire someone like DISC or Myers-Briggs, because you want different thought processes, you want uh, people who think differently, which will add value. Um, they also did perceptual maps and verbal exercises to help. Okay, Department of Corrections. This is a really cool one. The Department of Corrections co-created with the Department of Labor, and I'm with a research practitioner invitation only group that is throughout the world. And one of the heads in the Department of Labor uses design thinking. And so she was telling us this really cool story about corrections. We all know that this can be a very difficult time, right? But there's also a high rate of being reincarcerated. So what they created is they observed they looked at these problems, they looked at them, and they get six months of counseling before they are released, right? But it wasn't working. So what they did is they co-created, and they watched, and they brought in the families for six months. And they all did counseling together so they could understand where they'd been, where they are, and where they are going before they go in, back into society. They found a 50% reduction in incarceration in a five-year period. So it shows when you listen to the end user, when you work with others and co-create, you can make some really powerful and meaningful results. So now it's your turn. Again, design thinking, we're fast and furious. Five minutes, okay. These questions, we always look about trying to rep, uh, you're gonna try to represent similarities and differences. You're gonna act like an investigator now. It's the job to be done. A job to be done, why is it that 60% of all milkshakes in San Diego are sold before 6 a.m.? It has something, to, I'm going to give you, give you a clue. We're driving. So if you have a commute, right, you take a power bar, you eat it, five minutes later it's gone. If you take a donut, your hands are sticky, take a sandwich, it drips on you. But if you buy a milkshake at 6 a.m. and you take it in the car, you can sip on it probably the whole hour, and maybe at 10 a.m. you still aren't hungry. So we're looking, what is the job that needs to be done? So now if you would take these three questions, answer them yourself, but ask your person next to you. I'm trying to do this. What are some of your thoughts? And we're going to build on this five minutes now, and then you're going to have another 10 minutes to go and dig a bit deeper. Let's get started. Five minutes, Steve, you got it? So you know what MVP, we're going to talk about that. Yeah. Are we? We're good. We're pretty good? Okay. You're going to have some more time because the next worksheet 
again, is an empathy map. And I always do an empathy map because when you're interviewing someone, and this is where you're going to go back to those questions, you're going to write down, and you would bullet your answers, what are some of the quotes or defining words that were said or that your end user would be saying? And you can just you know, surmise what they would be saying. Doing, what actions and behaviors did you notice? When you're interviewing or observing, were they fidgeting? Were they fast? Were they happy? Were they sad? What might your user be thinking? What are her or his beliefs? And you write those down. And the last one, what, emotional, uh, what emotions might your subject be feeling? And you write those down. And now you're getting a picture. And what we would do is we'd put it into a character profile. And whether it be a singular person or a combination, you're now getting a picture of your end user. What are their wants? What are their needs? What are they feeling? What are they saying? What are they actually thinking? It's not a survey. You're actually talking to them and living in their world for a bit of time. So now we have 10 minutes, OK? So you're going to, as we said, we go back. We're going to go back to the sheet you just had, ask some more questions, and you're going to fill in one or two bullets in each square now. 10 minutes. Let's go. How are we doing? Good? Do you want to move on? We're good? Okay. So now, now we've got some information. Okay? We, we have thought of, you know, what our problem is, who we might be working with, where we've asked some questions about constraints, barriers, those kinds of things. Uh, we've done the empathy map, so we can fill that in. Now, we want to do the I want point of view, how might we? This is important. I'll give you an example. I want, I'm a high school male uh, in the cafeteria. Okay? My point, and I want to eat healthy. My point of view is, I don't like being called rabbit in the lettuce line. So, the how might we is, how might we create a healthy eating experience for a high school male? Again, not too broad, but we've narrowed it in. So now, I need you to narrow it in to your end user that you've talked to, what do they want? What is their point of view, not yours? And your question is, how might we create what for them? Okay? And I'll give you five minutes to fill that in. Okay? You might have more than one I want because you may have more than one character profile. But you can start with one. Now, you have your point of view, your I want point of view, how might we? We're going to prototype and test. We move quickly into the testing and prototyping because, again, we want to weed out the bad design and build on this successful one. We don't want to go down this path where we're trying all these different things and then we find out the product doesn't work or the customer doesn't want it. It's just not working. So, again, fast and furious, we move to prototyping and testing. So let's talk about some companies. Nordstrom's, right? Uh, one of the people in our research practitioner group was in the innovation department in Nordstrom. And what they decided is they needed to change up the cosmetics and how they were being sold. So they created a beauty bar. And what they did is they interviewed people and they said, who are the friendliest people you know? And they all said, well, it's the bartenders. Okay, bartenders. And then they thought, Okay, maybe 
we're going to prototype and we're going to go to Ikea. And we're going to get some furniture from Ikea, like bar furniture. We're going to set it up in the mall and set up cosmetics there and see how people like it. They prototyped it in the malls. Then they went to sororities, the same thing. They set up their equipment, they used the coats, and they used this very friendly uh, people in cosmetics. And again, they created low pressure beauty bar. Okay, Nordstrom's again, they say, okay, what else can we do? They have their private shoppers. And what they did is they created pocket stylus. They had a splash page for their customers to go to. Within the first hour, they sent out messages and they had 50 responses in text messages. They're going, people really do want to tell us what they think. So again, the end user. Now they're using some new technology uh, with Fanatics. It's data driven because they're looking at 90,000 new customers and their experiences, and they want to get this feedback from them. So again, uh, Nordstrom is big in design thinking. We're fast and furious, right? So next, we're into brainstorming, your ideas now, okay? So, you're going to have the rational choice. What are some ideas that are prudent, logical, great benefit of satisfaction? The darling, most likable, preferred. What's a favorite idea that you can think of? What's a meaningful idea? Most likely to delight. It's important to you. And the last one, the long shot. Great risk, but great rewards. So again, we'll give you 10 minutes and we'll see how it goes. Write down your ideas. Just briefly write down these fun ideas that you're having. Let's be creative. Now the fun part. Okay, now you're going to turn around to your tables and again, you're going to tell the group behind you or the individual about what you're doing and they're going to give you what are the things they like about your idea? What are some questions that they asked? What are some constructive criticism? And maybe did this spur a new idea? So let's turn around and now we get to talk and you get to again get some feedback. Fast and curious. So with education, you can go to such places as IDEO, consultants, certificates, speakers, workshops like this, and coaches. But now, I want to hear from you. Okay, this team right here. We're going to stand, one person stand. We always stand. Give us your idea in 30 seconds. One person. Let's go. Oh, she, okay. Let's go. Yes, let's, here we go. What's your idea? is to make a better process for boarding airplanes. Um, either having a sign overhead bin that correlate with your seat number, um, or you have a great idea of where the people that sit further back on the plane board first, that first class boarding first, and just makes sense to go from the back board. So. How many of us have problems with boarding? There you go. Great job. Let's go. Good. OK. This table. Do you have someone? Yes. Um, <laughs> How many of us go to restaurants? How many of us have issues there? Wonderful. Great job. Good job. Okay? In the back. My, my problem was in my company, uh, sometimes the employees uh, struggle to find time or support to innovate. And so one of the ideas that 
uh, felt, felt the most supported and feels the most achievable is holding workshops kind of like this one within our company so that our employees know that um, innovation is important and that we want their voices and their ideas to be heard. How many of you have employees who have those same issues and feelings? Good job, good job. Okay, table right here. What do we have? Not much. Uh, so uh, I'm doing electric car charging as, as a service. And uh, so one of the really good questions for a potential customer was, what's in it for me uh, as a parking lot operator? And so now I'm really just percolating. Some more ideas, right? Yeah. Fail early to succeed sooner. Get those ideas. What are they thinking, feeling, saying? Great job. And my table up front. Who has an idea? Or what is your new solution? Yo, yeah. no, problem. Okay? Okay. So mine is a fairly recent idea that I had a while, had about a year back, and that was a like it was called the Open 95 mask. It was supposed to be for like the COVID pandemic, but it could be used as a dust filter, um, other masks for like uh, operating carbon machine, you don't breathe in beams. It would practically be a mask that you can clasp over your nose and mouth, either by uh, magnetic or mechanical means, and you can open it from your face and not have to worry about always throwing out other masks too. It, it reduces waste and keeps the environment safe and also is sturdy enough to handle like a pretty heavy uh, either at work or labor stuff or yeah like recently the COVID pandemic so it can also be used like medical grade too. So. What a great idea how many of us had issues with masks right? Wonderful good job. So to all of you take a bow pat yourself on the back fast furious one hour of design thinking again I hope to see you in the future and again, go out and innovate. Thank you. Bye.